Hi, I'm Irving, and I'm an Adamaniac. Last time, we learned that Penguin is trying to get himself put into prison so he can hook up with a forger there and work a counterfeit check scheme. When that didn't work, he took Chief O'Hara hostage and escaped from Batman and Robin. Now, the dynamic duo are about to drive into a fusillade of bullets from Penguin's henchmen. After that, he intends to electrocute them and the Chief in a swimming pool. He's tossed a couple of large electric wires in the water, and the other ends are connected to his pool electrifier. Is there really a big market for that sort of thing? While we make our way through the opening credits, how about a couple of the kinds of jokes we told each other about the show? Here's one. Why did Batman slide down the bat pole? Because he had to go to the bat room. What do you call Batman and Robin when they've been run over by a steamroller? Flatman and Ribbon. What does Batman say when he needs to use the restroom? Do 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 Batman! You can never unhear that, so my evil plot for this week is complete. Look! That trunk on the slide! Push it! Holy Davy Jones! Hold it. This could be a death trap. As opposed to the more humane traps, Penguin orders his men to open fire. Holy Guadalcanal, Batman! What now? Stay calm. Let's assess this desperate situation. The shield is protecting you and the impacts of the bullets aren't even hurting your hands. So don't panic, the penguin's using wussy bullets anyway. Dollars to donuts. Chief O'Hara's in that truck. And look, there's a penguin at that electric switch. Right. First thing, drive the bird away with a bat pellet. Also known as a grenade. I've done maneuvers like that in World War II games. If you saw my story time, you know I wasn't in the army long enough to try the real thing. In any case, the chief is safe from electricity in his trunk at the bottom of the pool. That's a relief. Let's advance our bat shield through this deadly gunfire. Make for those big electric cables. Right you are. I think Batman is stuck in adjective hell. Insulated bat clippers? On the contrary. I'll reverse the polarity with my special bat inverser. I'm sorry, I have to do it. It's in my contract. Only my can save us now. Penguin gets up. Fry, you fry and sizzle and boil. We're going to get electricity and magnetism confused again, aren't we? Holy levitation! How did that happen? Simple. By reversing the polarity of the cables, I transformed the swimming pool into a gigantic anti-magnet. It repelled the metal of the trunk. In the days before everything went digital, I worked on electronic equipment like TVs, radios, stereos, anything they brought me. I'm not even going to go there. Freaking Batman! So there! Penguin and the gang surrender without a fight. Dear me, uh, most uh, serious. Uh, where's Mr. Jefferson Hamford, or the district attorney? With your permission, Judge Moot, Mr. Hamford has asked me to represent the people. Of course. It will be an honor, Batman. We are going to discover very quickly that this judge is an idiot, like everyone else in Gotham. Will the prisoner penguin rise and state how he pleads? In the immortal phrase of Emil Zola, Jacques! That's not a plea. Explain it to him, Judge. What? You accused? Indeed, Your Honor. I accuse Batman and Robin and the Gotham City Police Department with conspiracy to deprive me of my lawful rights. He tells the story of Aunt Harriet's bracelet and how Batman let him go. What do you say, Batman? It's quite true, Your Honor. I felt in this peculiar situation... He felt! He felt! Under what do we live in Gotham City, sir? We live under a code of law, or do we live under a costumed madman's feelings? Point uh, well uh, taken, uh, Mr. Penguin. As I said, the judge won't let Batman finish his sentence and tells Penguin to continue. 
He's supposed to be entering a simple plea, but this is what is known as losing control of the room. I had no other recourse but to protect myself by any means at my disposal. In other words, the acts of which you were accused were merely a citizen's reaction to illegal police conspiracy. The judge is buying this crap. Batman is furious, but there's nothing he can do. He withdraws all charges. Dismiss the charges. Release Mr. Penguin and his rascally arrestor of tears. Do you mean that you are not sending me to the state pen? No. Your eloquence has gained you freedom, Mr. Penguin. Now fly the straight and narrow path forevermore. All he had to say was, I plead guilty to all charges and he'd have what he wanted. What did he think would happen when he essentially stood there and convinced the judge that what he did wasn't illegal? In the Batcave, Batman has put fake fingerprints on Alfred and sent him to the penguin's nest. We don't know why yet. Meanwhile, Robin is calling the police tip line. But my dear chap. Don't you dear chap me, Mr. Quill Pen Quirch? Quill Pen Quirch? Who's he? <laughs> My pretty brainless birdie. He's merely the most brilliant criminal penman who ever lived. What an astonishing stroke of luck. Batman sold Alfred down the river. O'Hara is just there to warn Quill Pen to get out of town. Penguin can't believe it, so he checks the man's fingerprints. Of course, they match Quill Pen's. <laughs> Now, uh, <clears throat> allow me to suggest a mutually profitable collaboration. By all means, old bird. What's the setup? Bad move, Alfred. He's seen you with your glasses on before. No, I don't think so. Great heavenly ice throne! Like I said. Penguin shuts the place down by claiming an outbreak of Moldavian food poisoning. Rich people are dumb enough to buy it and run screaming out the doors. What's happening? Who is he, Pengy? He's an imposter. I recognize him as a busybody who has stumbled into my stew before. His name is Alfred. He is the faithful butler of the millionaire Bruce Wayne. Now that you have him, what do you do with him? Batman and Robin know something is wrong, so they're on their way to find out. I don't get it. Why should Bruce Wayne's butler be wearing a set of phony fingerprints? Alas, it's too simple. See, Mr. Wayne is a very prominent bank director, and they have got wind of my super crooked forgery scheme. And this is a counterplot laid by the Gotham City League of Bankers. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that figures. It figures wrong, but it figures. The first time Bruce Wayne tried to infiltrate Penguin's lair, Penguin thought he was a spy from a rival umbrella maker. Somehow, when something like this happens, he never thinks of Batman. Mr. Blue, Mr. Blue, I want you to prepare 50 pounds of pie crust. We are going to make a gigantic butler pie. <laughs> Add cannibalism to that list of charges. Alfred's bowler, heavily dusted with pastry flour. Holy chocolate eclair. What can it mean, Batman? I scarcely dare think. I fear it's too grim. They baked him with his clothes on, but he lost his hat. Got it. It couldn't possibly be planted there to make you think, no, that's too grim. Penguin takes the pie to Wayne Manor, scares the bejesus out of Aunt Harriet, and when Dick calls, Penguin tells him that he and Bruce had better get home now if they want to see Alfred alive again. Bruce and Dick confront him, and he demands a million dollars cash. Bruce says, it's in my study. Quick, turn off the automatic costume change device. Costume device off! Is that really the only way they can change? Granted, it was a lot faster than doing it by hand, but can they even do it by hand? Look, Dick. Good gravy, Dick. Coming through that window. Why, Bruce, isn't that Batman and Robin, Bruce? It certainly is, Dick. Go out and get them, Batman and Robin. We'll stay out here so as not to be in your way. Yes. Gee, Dick, you sound so natural. 
Why, Bruce, yes I do, Bruce. Is that a mosquito on your forehead? Please, Bruce, do not hit me again, Bruce. Nobody seems to notice that Chickadee is still holding an umbrella gun on Aunt Harriet. I take that back. Alfred noticed. Well hit, madam. She earned that. Batman and Robin finish up. Quickly, down and up the bat poles before they wake. It took a lot longer than that last time, but we the fans overlooked things like that because what was the point? We didn't love it for its pinpoint accuracy. Where are they, Alfred? I'd like to give them my thanks. They departed through the window, sir, in some haste. Oh, and sir, they asked me to give you a message. They said, stop abusing your butler or they're going to kick your, pardon me, sir, ass. Should you ever again come up against such a criminal as the penguin, don't endeavor to capture him yourselves. Call the police. The job of crime fighting is theirs. Fall! <laughs> In the epilogue, Bruce and Dick are in Commissioner Gordon's office. So are Penguin and his gang. All point. All point, Baxter! That's right, Mr. Penguin. I've just secured him a parole. Mr. Baxter's going to teach penmanship in one of the Wayne Foundation camps for underprivileged children. They took my suggestion. The handwriting samples in the handle of his umbrella are useless and they're all going to prison for no good reason. That story took some really odd turns. Batman doesn't seem to be learning anything about dealing with the penguin. Every time he's tried to use a bug, penguin detects it. He's clearly used Alfred as a spy once too often and he should have seen that coming. I'm curious to see if he tries something different the next time penguin waddles up. Burgess Meredith continues to put just the right spin on the character. Over the top, but not unbelievably so. It's perfect. Penguin is what I call one of the anchor villains of the show. Those anchors are Penguin, Joker, Riddler, and Catwoman, the four villains who teamed up in the movie. We wander off into who the heck is that territory for a while, then come back to one of the anchors. And Penguin was a good choice after what came before. We had a gigantic flop with shame, so grab one of the anchors quick. Penguin steps up to the plate and hits it out of the park. My only issue is the courtroom. No judge in America at that time would have let the penguin smoke and he would have had to take his hat off. Having an unknown guy in a costume act as prosecutor is just too much. And that judge, I bet any decent salesman could sell him elbow grease and headlight fluid. But as we've seen many times before, everyone in Gotham City is an idiot. The only exception is Aunt Harriet. As we saw, she's a total badass, as long as she can faint afterwards. I'm Irving and I'm an Adamaniac.